What is Shake and Bacons? This is the first of a monthly Q&A reward that I offer for my Patreon supporters. I initially had made these to be audio logs, but the first one was so long that Patreon would not accept it as an audio file. So I decided I would turn it into a video, share it here. This Q&A session is for patrons monthly to ask me questions or submit topics they want to hear me talk about specifically. And I'm going to upload it here as a video. If you're interested in being able to submit a question or a topic as I do these on a monthly basis, make sure you head over to Patreon. Without further ado, here is the first Q&A for Patreons. Let's do it. What is Shaken Patreon Bacons? I'm excited to do the first like Q&A audio log for you guys. Um, I'm thinking that I'm gonna try and answer all of them. Hopefully this doesn't get too long. I'm gonna keep my eye on the time. If it gets a little too long, maybe I'll save some of the topics for another session. But thank you all so much for submitting topics and questions. I have to confess, I was worried that no one would ask anything. <laughs> And then I would end up just rambling sort of like I usually do, which is also fine. Um, but thank you so much for submitting questions and topics for me to discuss. Hopefully you guys will find this interesting. So I'm just going to start in the order that I was asked the questions. So the first question from RD is, what music do you like and or what is your favorite group? I'm probably going to surprise some of you, I think. Um, I'm not one of those people that is super into music. My brothers definitely are. Like I know people that are really into music and they go to concerts all the time and they constantly have like a playlist or they've got Spotify collections going and they collect albums. I've actually never been one of those people. I enjoy listening to music, but I don't like I'd most of the time I'd rather listen to a podcast or something like that. But with that said, when I do listen to music, I definitely skew toward a certain direction. I'm st I think this is a holdover from when I was younger, but I'm definitely into alt rock and alt metal groups. And I think probably the easiest examples would be like Linkin Park, Disturbed, Sick Puppies. I really like Korn. Uh, I've always enjoyed Eminem. That's not alt metal or alt rock, but I kind of felt like he, from my from my youth, Eminem was like almost an alt rapper in some ways. So I really enjoyed Eminem. I like some Fall Out Boy music. I like the Hollywood Undead. Uh, let's see. I think that's all I can come up with off the top of my head. I also, like for, for more recent music, because I tend to gravitate toward the music that I grew up with, which is why I like a lot of those bands. I know some of them are newer. I also was really big into dubstep and electric music, like EDM. And um, I think my favorites out of that genre were probably the Glitch Mob and Nero. And I keep, I also keep a playlist on YouTube actually called Omega Aria and it's inspired by Mass Effect and that's a mix of like alt electro music and alt rock as well. I think that's public. So if any of you are curious, you can probably go to my YouTube page and then look under playlists. And if it says Omega Aria, that's what that is. And then sometimes I like, really stupidly positive music if I'm in a really good mood that is like the complete opposite direction of everything I just named, um, which is kind of mildly embarrassing. Like if I'm in a really good mood for some reason, I love to listen to Katy Perry music. I'm mildly embarrassed admitting that, but something about her music just makes me feel peppy. And if I'm already feeling happy, her music makes me feel peppier. <laughs> and uh, like I've been digging I've been digging the Old Town Road remix lately, even though, honestly, I don't want to offend anyone by saying this, but I hate country music. I think typically you either like love country or you hate country. I am not a country music fan, but something about the mashup of the rap style from Lil Nas X and um, Billy Ray in Old Town Road, I really like that song. And I've also been loving, this is sort of off of my normal taste, I've been loving most of the Spider-Verse soundtrack. I keep listening to that on repeat when I do listen to music. Those are my music tastes. It's all over the place. I don't have a dedicated music taste. I think I've only been to maybe like two concerts and that's because someone else wanted to go. I think one of the concerts was Simple Plan. I'm pretty sure and it was back in like the early thousands <laughs> uh so it was it was a long time ago 
Next question. Do you have any unusual fears or phobia? Ooh, so RD has tryptophobia. That's seeing a bunch of holes, right? I... I don't know that I would call them unusual. I definitely have a lot of fears. Um, I'm afraid I can get kind of claustrophobic and that's triggered by small things too. Like if someone is too close to me sometimes, I can get really claustrophobic. I'm also deeply afraid of deep water and I can't remember what that's called. That actually has a name, fear of deep water. Hold on, this is the powers of Google. Thalassophobia, persistent fear of large, deep, dark bodies of water. I am definitely, a f I definitely have that. Although I don't think that that's necessarily an unusual phobia. I'm trying to think if I have anything else. I'm also deeply afraid of slugs. And that was based on a formative, like childhood horrific experience that I had. Um, when I was younger, my family lived in Maine for a time. And my mother grew a trellis of snap peas in the back of the house. And I don't know what it was about this house in Maine, but there were these mega slugs and snails that lived on the property. And when I say mega, I'm talking like 10 to 12 inch long, like thick slugs and snails. I'm starting to like get the weebs just remembering this. And we used to see them. They'd like crawl up the sides of the... Ugh. Anyway, I ran out as a child because my mom used to pick all the peas and keep them for herself and she'd put them in her salad every night and I wanted to have some peas because I used to love snap peas. And I, I want to say I was like five and I ran out barefoot in the morning to get some snap peas before she picked them all and I stepped barefoot on a foot long slug and it wrapped itself around my foot and I just remember freaking out and screaming and screaming. My mom thought I was being murdered. And the slug was so big that she ended up, I remember she ran into the house because she couldn't get it off my foot and she poured a straight up full container of salt on it. And it did, it was so big, it didn't even melt. And she got it, she scooped it up with a shovel because it finally shriveled off my foot. And she threw it out into the, into the bushes at the edge of the property of the house that we were renting. And it was just, it's so horrifying. I'm trying, I'm honestly trying not to freak out as I'm recording this. <laughs> like, so I definitely have a freak out about slugs and snails and sea nettles, actually. I am terrified of sea nettles and jellyfish. They freak me out big time. Third question, the apocalypse. Would you rather die right away or survive in a new cruel reality? What do you think it takes to be a survivor? Honestly, I would rather die right away because... I I know I'm a weak person. Like I, I can work out and I can try and learn the bow and arrow, which is honestly why I started learning archery. I've always found archery really interesting, but I do have a tinfoil hat part of me that thinks that if the worst happens, I should have a weapons or survival skill that I can employ that does not rely on like metal producing or a factory or gunpowder. Um, you know, if in the worst case scenario, I can teach myself to make arrows and I can hunt. But um, honestly, I think I'd rather die right away. And the reason I say that is because I have, I have asthma and it's not like a genetic asthma. It's because my brother and I were exposed to lead and asbestos at a very young age. So it's definitely like an artificially induced asthma. So I have asthma pretty bad. And if I was if I somehow managed to survive after the apocalypse, I would probably die fairly quickly just from suffocating in my own lungs when medication ran out. So I think if there was an apocalypse, the first thing I would have to do if I survived was somehow make my way to most pharmacies in the area and attempt to take the medication that I need to give myself a fighting chance. And as, in terms of what it takes to be a survivor, I, I think some people take the view of an apocalyptic event of being, you have to fight and be a fighter and you have to be kind of hard and cruel, sort of like Mad Max-esque. I honestly think the best thing, like the best situation and scenario would be get the hell away from people. Because I think people in general, if people are by themselves, most people are fine. 
However, I think that when when you have a lot of herd thinking and our people have herd thinking and people start panicking, I mean, there's a reason why there are riots and people kind of lose their minds. It's because they all influence each other in a negative way. And when there's an apocalypse and the ruling authority is gone essentially and people realize it's all out for your it's all it's every man for himself essentially you're going to have people acting in i want to say almost animalistic ways i can imagine at that point in time and i think the best bet would be to get away from people i think like my dream at some point because again i am very tinfoil hatty is i would like i would personally like to somehow be living like out on a remote piece of land on a lake somewhere in New Hampshire. That's like my dream where I'm not close to people just because I think if something ever did happen, you're probably better off on your own. Like you want to be in reach of a town or somewhere where you can at least get supplies right off the bat. But I think overall, it would probably be better to be away from most cities away from most people because I don't think, I think in a scenario like that, people are not something that you're going to be able to trust. Thanks for your questions, RD. I was, I talked way more about that than I thought I would. All right. So next question is from Rob D. If you had the chance to go up in space, would you? That's a really interesting question. And it is something I've actually thought about a lot. So I think it would depend on the context for me. I have considered the Elon Musk Mars colonization stuff. That's why I've thought about this so much. I think that I would definitely be interested in going to space in regards to like colonizing Mars or helping develop a colony. But at this point in my life, I've seen so little of my own planet that while it's still left, I think I would like to see more of it. The original colonizers that go to Mars are probably gonna have severely reduced life expectations just from exposure to radiation and all of the hazards of everything. So I wouldn't mind going for one of the Mars rotations after it has been well developed and after I have seen enough of Earth to appreciate it. I think that would be really neat. If it, it was if it was me just like going to space to go to the, the International Space Station or something like that, I can't say that that would actually interest me. I would want to actually go somewhere. You know what I mean? And I think that I would like to be able to go somewhere like after we have a space elevator in place or something like that, because I think predominantly the major issue that we are going to face is how we get to space. Um, because, you know, whether, whether our country or our world likes it or not, we are running out of fossil fuels. And really the only way that we can overcome atmospheric gravitational physics at this point is by burning an immense amount of fossil fuel for a rocket to free itself from the atmosphere. And I, I feel like we need to hoard, this is just my personal opinion, I feel like we need to hoard our fuel so that we can continue working on establishing a space presence so that maybe at some point we can get the space elevator built. We don't have to rely on stuff like that. I think that's probably the first priority. So I'm thinking optimistically, if it got to a point where we have a space elevator and we don't need to worry about the limitations of burning fuel versus taking advantage of like the sun with, and becoming more established as a galactic civilization, like I've talked about um, in some videos in the past, I think that would be a really interesting time to go to space. I will say I do kind of personally lament the fact that I feel like I was born too soon. I wish I had been born later to see where we go and how things change. And if I could live forever, that's probably why I would want to live forever. Just to see just the evolution and the growth of humankind. I think that'd be really cool. All right. And Ruby's questions. What book or book series made you into an avid reader and about when did that happen? This is a hard question for me because... I started reading at a really, really young age, and I can't remember specifically which books exactly got me into reading because I have always, always been a reader. I devour most books. I don't really restrict myself to different genres or fiction versus nonfiction. I like to read medical nonfiction. 
Um, I used to read a lot of historical nonfiction. I like to read a lot about science and I love fiction in general. I love sci-fi. Um, I've started to educate myself more on fantasy. I'm not that well versed in fantasy. I really enjoy classics and that's sort of how I started getting into reading. My mother actually bought me a full set of the great illustrated classics when I was young. And she bought, for some of the books, she bought the actual books. Like, she bought me Heidi. And my mother would read to me every night, starting from an incredibly young age. I think I was, I'm not even going to pretend to know at what age I was reading on my own. But my mother started reading, like, she read Moby Dick to me. And she read The Secret Garden to me. And she read, um, I remember I loved... The Three Musketeers. I loved The Count of Monte Cristo. I was obsessed with The Journey to the Sun of the Earth. I remember she read me Little Women, and I wasn't that impressed with Little Women. <laughs> uh, I loved The Swiss Family Robinson, which ironically does not hold up at all. I used to be obsessed with that book, and a few years ago I went back and read it again, and that book was the most absurd, made-up, ridiculous novel I think I have encountered from the classics. Like, that book does not hold up at all. It is terrible. But yeah, that's that's actually how I started, was reading classics. I also really loved, initially, the story of Anne of Green Gables. I was kind of a, uh, a loner as a kid, because my parents are both in the military. So we moved a lot, so I was homeschooled for quite a long time. And it's hard when you're moving every couple years and you're homeschooled to actually make make a lot of friends. So books were my friends and I used to just read to kind of escape reality. All of the characters in the books kind of became my friends. So I identify with Anne of Green Gables to a large degree because she was like an outsider and she was kind of poor. My family was pretty poor. Like we, um, we couldn't even afford water. So I remember my mom used to save empty milk jugs and we would go to a public water fountain and she'd fill up the milk jugs so that we could have water and we'd have to go to food pantries. So like I I definitely came from a background where identifying with poorer characters in these classics kind of made me feel more at home. And I really identified, like that's one reason I identify with Anne of Green Gables and identify with the secret princess and I identified with Heidi. And you notice there's like a trend there. It's all these kind of adopted orphan kids like the secret garden she's like they're all well they're either orphans or they're kind of you know they're kind of on their own or they're kind of by themselves and then they somehow find friends and it turns out they're special and as a kid i really liked that idea because it like gave me hope for myself if that makes any sense so i really liked those when i was young and then i just sort of started reading an increasingly larger and wider genre from there. But yeah, that's where I started, was the illustrated classics. Oh, uh, let's see. If I can be a bird, ooh, what bird would I be and why? Believe it or not, I have thought about this. And I would be probably a peacock pheasant. And the reason why is I am actually a really ridiculous person, and I fully acknowledge this. I, I kind of feel bad sometimes for people that interact with me in person because I know I'm exhausting to deal with. <laughs> And, um, but at the same time, I'm also fairly shy and I feel like the peacock pheasant, at least visually, is a really good example of my personality because for the most part, it's just kind of gray and chilling and it's cool. And then when it gets all worked up and upset, it like blasts its feathers out and it's got these crazy, they look like opal gemstones on the feathers and they're like, hey, look, I'm crazy, I'm ridiculous. So I kind of feel like that's very emblematic of my personality. So I do think that I would probably be a, uh, a peacock pheasant. <laughs> probably not the answer you were expecting, but I do feel like maybe that's the one that best fits. Are you coming to our wedding? I actually don't know. And that's why I haven't RSVP'd to you yet. My husband and I don't have a lot of money. So traveling is really difficult for us. Like we were, we were married several years ago like we still haven't even been able to afford a honeymoon. So I don't know if we will be able to afford coming, even though I want to. So to be determined, I have to figure out if we have it in our budget or not. But I would if I could, and I want you to know that. 
100% I would if I could. I think it would be awesome and I would love to support you guys. Next question. What is something that makes you feel very content? What is something that makes me feel very content? Ooh. Oh, I got to think about that. Hmm. All right. Here's something that makes me feel very content. In the winter, if it's cold, I like to sit. I have like, everybody has a favorite corner of a couch, right? So I have a favorite corner of a couch and I have a heated blanket. So I like to sit in my favorite corner on the couch underneath my heated blanket when it's cold. And I like to have either a mug of tea or coffee. And then I have a book and one of the one of the kitty cats, one of the little porgs, Miss Gingerbread Cookie, whenever I'm on the heated blanket and it's cold, her favorite thing is to come snuggle along my legs. So one thing that makes me feel really content is just being underneath the heated blanket in the corner of the couch with Miss Gingerbread Cookie snuggled on my legs and I don't have anything to do and I can just read or I can watch a movie or I can watch a YouTube video and I don't have to think about anything. Uh, the other thing that makes me really content is I know people don't celebrate all the same holidays, but I am a big Christmas person. And I think that's because that was the big holiday that my family celebrated when I was young. And just something about seeing all the lights and the decorations and the stockings and people just get like happier around that time of year. And the music's peppy and it just reminds me of like a time gone by. Something about that I really love. So I would say also like the entire Christmas season, I am just, I'm so content. If I could identify myself as an item during the Christmas season, I would be like a plate of snickerdoodle cookies and a glass of eggnog. That's how content I am. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think that's all the questions so far. So hopefully I answered well enough. I know some of my answers are probably surprising, especially like the Katy Perry thing. That's still kind of embarrassing for me to admit. Although, I mean, I guess I should probably just own the fact that I enjoy her music when I'm feeling positive, but it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you guys again for submitting questions. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to doing these every month. Uh, what I'll try and do is, you know, give about a week or so after I initially post the questions and answers and topics for each month, and that'll give people time to respond. And then I'll do, I'll do the recording for the audio log like this. So if you have any follow-up questions on anything I've said, just let me know, you know, comment something on the audio log, or if you have follow-up questions, I can answer them next time. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for supporting me again and being patient with me as I try and make sure that I have the rewards figured out and I fine tune the Patreon. I really do appreciate it and I appreciate your support so much, all of your support. So I hope you guys are having an amazing day and in the meantime, I will catch you later.